It's Micah. Welcome to our third weekly wrap-up. Apologies for missing the year-end weekly wrap-up last week. Uh, my voice took a vacation uh, for the end of the year and uh, I had to uh, see it off and now it has returned and we are back with uh, our new weekly wrap-up hopefully new and improved. Uh, we're following the same basic format. This week I'm going to go a little more into some general entertainment news as opposed to strictly music, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, this is January 6, 2024, and here's some of what's going on this week. Well, uh, a somewhat surprising conclusion to the holiday chart wars. Uh, Brenda Lee started off the holiday season with two weeks at number one on the Billboard charts, and uh, after ceding control of the chart to Mariah Carey for another two weeks, for the final week of the holidays, Brenda Lee is back at number one. Uh, congratulations again to Brenda, and it is, this has been a real, uh, I wanted to say cat fight, but I didn't want to make it sound uh, seamy or in any way imply that Brenda and Mariah are, are at each other's throats in, in any conceivable way. This is a great rivalry. I'm glad that there's a little competition going on. Both ladies got in at number one this season, uh, and the top 40 is chock full of Christmas songs uh, at the end of the year, which is interesting and, of course, a little disorienting to those of us who grew up back when Christmas songs were excluded from these festivities. Um, the most surprising thing to me is to see how some of the new holiday classics or potential holiday classics are beginning to make their presence known on the chart. I noticed that Ariana Grande almost cracked the top 10 this year with her Christmas song, for instance. Uh, uh, so, you know, it's, it's a little disorienting looking at the charts. I think in the top 20, there's only maybe two or three non-Christmas songs or non-holiday songs. Uh, and uh, it is it is weird for those of us who re remember back before the streaming era when things were very clearly sectioned off so that the charts reflected current music only. As a matter of fact, there was a time when uh, the, the Hot 100 didn't even recognize... Uh, like after 26 weeks, I think it was, uh, if, if you overstayed your welcome on the chart, they simply kicked you off regardless of how well you were selling or how much airplay you were still getting. It was, it was, uh, it was almost like we can't feature the new music anymore and show everyone who's getting played on the radio it, that, out of the current music, so we kind of have to kick the old, old songs off. But they abandoned that a few years ago as well. So this will be the conclusion, and it'll be interesting to see how things will shake out next week when all the holiday songs will, will probably drop off of the chart. I think that's the timing that happens. Mariah's may stick around, and a couple others may stick around for another week. Uh, but other than that, we should see a big vanishing act, and we'll see who emerges at number one uh, on the next countdown. Uh, over on the album charts, however, amid a flurry of Christmas albums, no pun intended, flurry, that was... That was almost cute, uh, but I didn't, I didn't, like I said, no pun intended. But Taylor Swift manages to hold off uh, all the Christmas offerings on the, on the Billboard Hot 200 chart. And here to celebrate that with me is my cat, Amir. Come on, you're already almost here. See, it's not a photobomb if you get to introduce the cat before it actually gets in the frame. So, where's that tail? Okay. So, uh, congratulations to Taylor for having, uh, for ending up, uh, fittingly ending up a year that she kind of dominated by having the number one album at the end of the year. It's the top U.S. album uh, at the year in chart. 1989 was one of her most successful albums, so it does make sense that the reissue is also one of her more successful reissues. Uh, I have not listened to the album all the way through. That might be a good thing for me to react to. I did react to my first Taylor Swift album this uh, song this week, and uh, that was a, a great experience, and I want to react to some more of those. Um, hold on just a second. I had a timer set on my watch and uh, um, it just went off so apologies for that maybe I'll edit this out so if you saw so if I did edit it out and you see the cat jump over from here that wasn't uh, 
any sort of uh, witchcraft or anything. It was just editing. All right, so you know you're very distracting, and I think that's the point. So congratulations to Taylor on that on that accomplishment, and then we'll see if she holds on uh, next week at number one as well. In non-chart news, there's a couple of things that happened this week that caught my attention, and although they're seemingly unrelated, in my mind, I think of them kind of as the same thing uh, or a similar phenomenon. The first was rapper Boozy Badass, who I will only refer to as Boozy because I'm not going to acknowledge that he is any sort of superlative um, in that way, but I'm just going to call him Boozy. He uh, escorted his daughter out of this uh, the showing of the color purple that they went to. He was upset with the lesbian storyline. If you hadn't heard the story, I just wanted all of that to sink in. So Boozy has been on a crusade against anything that related to LGBT. Uh, he went on a crusade against uh, Zia Wade. Is that her name? I'm sorry. I, I, I suddenly had a, like a, a moment there where I was like, I'm sure of her name, but now, but, but uh, Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union's daughter. Um, and he, he had a whole bunch of parenting advice that no one asked him for regarding uh, that child. And then uh, a couple years ago, he wanted Lil Nas X to commit suicide, presumably because he was too uh, overtly gay. And that was a problem for, for Boozy. And now he uh, walked into this screening unsuspecting and, and ended up having to walk out, which is his prerogative as a parent and as a citizen to say, I don't like the content that's being presented here and I'm not going to sit through it any longer. That's actually his prerogative. What was a little extra was the fact that he felt the need to broadcast the fact that he and his daughter had walked out because uh, there was no need in my opinion, for him to broadcast that fact, and I don't really think it worked in his favor. As we can see from the picture, he doesn't mind wearing the color purple, it's just that he doesn't want to see it. And he, lots of things he, apparently that exist in our world that he just doesn't want to see. Uh, and it's, it's interesting that, um, it's an interesting parallel to draw that perhaps uh, there are colors in this world, and I'm, and I'm guessing since all, so many of the colors are in the rainbow flag, he can't very well boycott all of them at the same time. But I'm sure he would if he could. So I think it's rather ironic that he rail he rails against these types of um, these type you know and focuses on these types of issues and presents himself as an. Uh, as a as a moral crusader i have i'm not overly from oh i'm not familiar at all with boozy's music uh i know that i've probably danced to a couple of his songs in the club or his songs that he's been featured on but by way of research because i wanted to be fair i took a walk through some of his catalog and i pulled up lyrics and i pulled up as many lyrics as i could as i could find and you know, it's important not to take lyrics out of context, but he is, by any definition of the word, a gangster rapper. And his songs pretty much deal with misanthropy, misogyny, explicit sex, uh, violence, threats of violence towards people he does not like, and drug usage. And there are probably some social messages mixed in there. I didn't, I didn't make it to those. And I know that his music resonates with people because he's had a, a tough upbringing uh, in Louisiana and, it's, and, and he's been in prison. He was, um, he was in prison on drug charges and there was uh, controversy over whether that was really, that sort of prison time was really warranted for the offense that, that he committed. And so he's had a rough time of it, and I think it's important to see music through the lens of the people who are expressing themselves. But I find it more than a little ironic that he puts out records that are, by any definition of the word, profane and misanthropic and seem to rail against any sort of concept of decency. All of this in the name of 
expressing where you know the perspective uh, of 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 you know his upbringing and, and the th things that he was uh, experienced in his life, but seeing a Pulitzer Prize winning novel transferred to the big screen, showing um, affection between two women who were subjugated in the society that they were brought up in and seeing them reach out to each other and all he can see is moral outrage and all he can d d exhibit is disgust towards this when there's so much more obviously disgusting stuff in his music. If you take his music at face value, it's pretty bleak. And so you would think that as a fellow creative, he would empathize with the need to talk about these issues or present these issues even if they aren't to everyone's liking. He would empathize, I'm sure he's had his share of parents and outraged community leaders and so on and so forth speak out about the, the music that he creates and for him to turn around and do the same thing to some other creative work is, is odd to me. The other thing is that as a fellow creative, it, it, it's, to me it's astounding the degree of cultural illiteracy he displays by not even understanding what the basic premise of The Color Purple is, not knowing what Alice Walker stands for as an author, uh, as a titan in, in American culture, and uh, obviously not having seen the, the original movie. If he were maybe a little younger, I could excuse that as well, but this dude's over 40, so not really having it. Over on the other side of the world, or maybe not so far on the other side of the world, world Cat Williams blew up the internet with uh, an online interview that he had with uh, Shannon Sharp this week. Disclaimer, I know little to nothing about Cat Williams. I am aware of him as a pop culture figure. I knew he was in some movies. Uh, apparently his biggest role was in Friday or next Friday. I, one, of the, one of the Friday movies, in that, which I have to admit, I've never seen those all the way through. Just seen you know snippets here and there. But to be fair, I've never seen Star Wars all the way through either. So um, in some ways, I'm culturally unplugged. So I don't know a lot about Cat. What I do, what I did find out in researching for this uh, weekly wrap-up is that his first name is actually, his given name is actually Micah. So I, he also gets a ding for not going with his birth name. Why would you not go, uh, go out into the public when you have such a cool name and go with that? But he prefers to go by Cat. So I guess I have to respect that. What I don't have to respect is the way that he comports himself in this interview and it's mystifying to me that he uh, he makes a lot of claims in this in this interview I have not watched the interview I've heard excerpts of things he said towards individual people um, and to me it just seems like he's settling personal scores and so it's a little mystifying to me that a lot of people see him as a hero for calling out the industry uh, he's basically, and I think this is something that's been known about him, is that he basically considers himself um, a rebel in the industry. He hasn't gone along with the things that the Hollywood executives and the people who are in charge, he hasn't gone along with what they wanted him to do at any point. So, you know, and in that sense, I think he's a, he's considered sort of a folk hero. But there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of undertones to these things that he says uh, and some bit really big overtones that are kind of absurd in my opinion. The undertones are often uh, homophobic in nature or in some way um, in some way uncomfortable with any kind of, of gender fluidity. One of the common talking points is that Hollywood emasculates black men by forcing all of them to dress as women and somehow or other it seems like every black comic ends up portraying a woman at some point. So he's of course worked that into his narrative about how things have to be but then ironically he to be petty apparently put a clause in one of his contracts that, that he would only appear in a uh, and I'm forgive me if I'm not stating this correctly he would only appear in the same uh, show or series with uh, with uh, who is it, uh, Ricky Smiley, if he if he wore a dress. So 
basically you're saying that Hollywood is this big machine that emasculates black men, but then you go back and do the same thing to one of your fellow performers. Mm. I don't know. Again, I don't know enough about it to really have a, a fully developed opinion. I just think it's it's odd that people are treating him as a hero, and it's also odd to me that a lot of what the, the response I'm hearing from a lot of people is that he's he's just telling the truth. I have a whole video planned about the misguided nature of this no lies detected culture that we have, where we think that just because you get up and talk about a bunch of things that are true that somehow you're you're a person with integrity um there's all kinds of ways that the truth can be misrepresented but you can line it up in a certain way so that it makes it appear that all you're doing is stating facts but nobody is ever just stating facts everyone is always drawing the facts to them that prove their own point on things uh and also cat mentioned the illuminati which is an automatic no-go for me because the Illuminati is a is a self proving theory where whereby the Illuminati is like the Matrix. It's like a mini Matrix. We don't know we're in the Matrix because they did such a good job of constructing it. Nobody we nobody knows that the Illuminati is controlling everything because they've done such a good job. So it's a self proving theory whereby only these certain people who are conspiracy theorists and say the word Illuminati really know what's going on, but nobody has any proof of it. So. Uh, that's an automatic no-go for me as well. And the reason why I put him and Boozy in the same bucket is that I feel like both of them are are in this war against this authority that they don't like. And when in fact all that's really going on is that they have different opinions from certain people who make decisions. The, the movie studios greenlit the color purple and allowed this love story to be told. And the... Uh, and the, the movies and the, and the studios also selected Kevin Hart to be in certain films and Kat thinks that, that he's a plant and I'm not really sure what exactly what that means in Cat Williams uh, conspiracy world it's never just oh well these are people in power and what people in power do is they make decisions because that's what their job is and if you disagree with that that's just you disagreeing with it it's not it, you know, not everything is a conspiracy. Not everything is personal against you. And if you, and certainly though, if you act like a jerk enough times to towards these people to let them know you don't respect anything that they do, then yeah, you're probably not going to get the part that you're looking for. I mean, and I, you know, and I, I think that goes for a lot of other people in the industry who claim to be uh, martyrs for the cause by you know that they weren't bigger stars or what have you anyway this is this weekly wrap-up has uh gone a little off the rails and i realized that maybe we'll cut we'll clean it up in the editing and it's gone a little more social than usual but i did say at the beginning of uh of this series that i've reserved the right to get a little more uh get my hands a little dirtier and not just not just go uh into a banal entertainment news and boy did i did i live up to that this week so i guess apparently that's my new year's resolution at any rate, <laughs> uh, I know I've rambled on too long. We're just going to wrap this up. Personal notes here. Um, I appreciate all the views that I've gotten this week on my reaction videos. And I'm, I feel like I'm getting better at it. I feel like the, the quality of, of everything is, 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 is getting better. Uh, I'm getting more comfortable with editing my videos so that when I do stammer, I can edit it out half the time and keep it in the other half the time so you know that I'm still a real person. Uh, and heck, I know I have a long way to go on these weekly wrap ups, but I'm starting to get the hang of those reaction videos. And please uh, feel free to drop requests um, for things you want to hear about. Maybe even if it's a newsworthy thing, put it in, uh, put it in and I'll include it in next week's weekly wrap up. If there are requests for reactions, put them in the, in the comments of those reaction videos or, or Put them in the comments here. Uh, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and please help me to make music better. See you next week.